This week on ANN, Heroes 2 reveals the first ever world champion. The Adventist Church in North America holds a vaccine symposium. And small groups have big results in Papua New Guinea. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, Heroes 2 has a new world champion. Ian Segi is 14 years old from the Philippines, and he beat more than 300 people, including his father, who tried to qualify for the championship. Segi faced David Jeffrey in the finals. Jeffrey is the director of continuing education at Berman University in Canada. Segi said of his victory, I was really nervous the whole game, but right now, I was very happy that I was able to do something both for God and for me. After his win, Segi's family joined him on screen to congratulate him and praise God. The Heroes 2 World Championship was held in conjunction with a global virtual camp meeting from May 19th through May 22nd. More than 300 competitors went through different rounds, including a semi-final round before 16 players from different parts of the world came together to compete in the Heroes World Championship on May 23rd. The championship was live streamed on 10 different channels and translated into English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Heroes team member Jeff said of Segi's win, he didn't simply memorize the answers, he knew the reason behind the answers. He took the time to study the Bible. That's the goal of Heroes, for people to see the Bible is amazing, with amazing stories of real heroes. And you can be a real hero, because with the power of the Holy Spirit, we are all heroes today. You can find out more about Heroes and download the game by visiting the website heroesbibletrivia.org. You can also find Bible studies and answers to some of the Internet's biggest questions by visiting hope.study slash heroes. A special symposium called Is the COVID Vaccine Trustworthy? A biblical conversation about science was held on May 15 and sponsored by the North American Division. The symposium was hosted by Breath of Life director Carlton Bird and speaker and director for Faith for Today, Roy Ice. In his greeting, Bird said, our goal during our time together is to help find answers to some of the questions that have been arisen about the COVID vaccine and help you make an informed decision on the vaccine and if it is right for you and your loved ones. The special symposium included healthcare professionals, communication experts, and church theologians discussing the interconnectedness of the Bible and science. They shared tips on appropriate messaging to others, presented data so viewers are able to make well-informed decisions about getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Presenters also took questions from emails sent in for the question and answer portion of the event. The symposium, a combination of live and pre-recorded segments, aired on the Hope Channel, the NAD Facebook page, and the NAD YouTube channel. Presenters included noted evangelist Mark Finley, church historian Merlin Burt, doctors Peter Landless and David Williams, communication experts Garrett Caldwell and Kostin Jordash, India Medley, vice president, CNO for Howard University Hospital, and more. President of the Adventist Church in North America, G. Alexander Bryant, offered a devotional thought at the symposium's conclusion. Director of Health Ministries for the Adventist Church in North America, Angeline Brower, says, it's been so heartening to see the varied perspectives, experiences, and expertise come together for this program. As we've seen, the choices we each make do have an impact on the lives of those around us. I believe that respectful dialogue earnest seeking for truth and prayers for the unity that comes through the graces of the Holy Spirit will help us all come through this crisis. We will be stronger if we press together and press towards Christ. To watch the symposium and for more information, visit nadadventist.org. In a year when most of the world came to a halt due to the COVID-19 crisis, small groups flourished in Papua New Guinea. The Eastern Highlands Simbu Mission is one of the missions that experienced tremendous growth in new members with more than 5,100 small groups starting in 2019 and 2020. Nearly 100,000 people were involved in these groups and there were more than 13,000 baptisms in 2020. While international speakers were unable to attend last year's Papua New Guinea for Christ evangelistic campaign due to the pandemic, 
local pastors forged ahead and conducted programs. Small groups proliferated. President of the Eastern Highland Simbu Mission, Joannes Fisamo, said, a lot of churches and communities were looking forward to PNG for Christ. However, the unexpected, unplanned COVID-19 happened. But we must not be discouraged. All things good or bad happen for our good. God knows that. Despite the pandemic crisis, the small group movement is strong and company churches are emerging from these cell groups. Discipleship training by the South Pacific Division's discipleship ministry team in 2018 and 2019 proved to be invaluable. Fusamo said, we are encouraging our big churches to close the door and go into small cell groups. This is the way to make disciples for Jesus. If all missions in PNGUM champion small group ministries, the results will be enormous. Advent Health Orlando organized a moving tribute to organ donors with spinning pinwheels across its campus lawn as a way to spread awareness of the importance of organ donation. Advent Health shares the following story with us. We are taking the opportunity to display to the entire community the impact that organ and tissue donors have had in East Central Florida. There are 217 pinwheels seated out here on the Advent Health Orlando lawn. Those 217 pinwheels represent the 217 organ donors in East Central Florida last year. From those 217 donors, 706 organs were transplanted, both here in Orlando, 200 of them, and throughout the rest of the United States. My son donated corneas, parts of his liver for research, two kidneys, skin grafts. People think about organ donation, they think of saving you know, livers and hearts and lungs, but there's a lot of other things you can donate too to improve someone's life. They could see again because they get corneas. He donated corneas. I think people need to realize that it's a way for them to live on. The pinwheels aren't just sitting still. They are twirling. And what that represents is that every gift that is given has an impact on lives. People get to see their children grow up. People get to walk their daughters down the aisle. People get to be there for family reunions. And that's what, donation is what makes this possible. Seeing them spin makes me feel like he's here. I want people to see it. I want him to be celebrated. I just think that it's a sign that he is living on every day. In all of our lives, they're spinning now. I just, it gives me chills because it makes me feel like he's here with me right now. These visual displays serve as a reminder of what is possible and what has been done to honor life and to honor the legacies of people who wanted to become donors. Coming up, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency in Canada works to help refugees in Myanmar with sanitation supplies and education during COVID-19. We'll be right back after the break. We may look, pray, read, think, worship, sing, and share differently, but we all look forward to the Sabbath. And we all look forward to the future when Jesus will come again. With this message in mind, we arrived at a core component for a new identity system, the creation grid, a simple seven column structure for layout. The grid is a reference both to the prophetic timeline as well as to the creation week that culminated in the seventh day Sabbath. Regardless of what or where you are designing, you can always find information to help you communicate that we are all Seventh day Adventists. When I first felt called to be a minister, I didn't want to be a typical pastor with a suit and a tie. One of the things I appreciated most about Christ was his ability to defy convention. Once, when I moved away from a place where I was pastoring, one of my friends said, we're gonna miss you. You're so unusual. I take that as a compliment. I'm someone who likes a challenge. I love to test my limits. I've been running for more than 35 years, most days of the week. I love to run, especially in nature. It's time alone with God where I can recharge. 
I run first thing in the morning so I can prepare emotionally and spiritually for whatever I might experience that day. I find my greatest fulfillment in relating to people who aren't Adventist or even Christian. We have to meet people where they are. That's what Jesus did, and it's still our responsibility today. I have friends who are Christians and atheists, gay and straight, old and young, of all races and ethnicities. I'm a biker, a runner, and a pastor. I'm extremely blessed. My name is Stephen Chavez, and this is my whole life. Welcome back. Refugees from Myanmar have been living in camps along the Thailand border for over 30 years. Life in the camps is challenging, especially during a global pandemic. ADRA has been helping the refugees with sanitation supplies and education on COVID. ADRA Kenda sent this report. As part of the humanitarian response to the COVID-19 pandemic, coordinated in camps through the COVID-19 National Response Group, ADRA, leading the risk communication and community engagement pillar, started the RCCE Protects project in July 2020. The project was funded by the Canadian Embassy's Canada Fund for Local Initiatives and ADRA Canada reaching all nine temporary shelters along the Thai-Myanmar border. COVID-19 has been affected by COVID-19 for almost three years now. ที่ตัวตาเรตักเลยโอ้ยส่วนนี้เนาะเนาะตัวนี้เราอาจจะเราตากลุ่มขาดดุกนะบ้านเราโควิดชิคุยอ่าตาชาอาตาอุตะเล
আয়ঙ্গো লুরে নিলানি বেফি পারে তুমি আগু সোয়ে না খাও আমি এটা পারে বিরল কুলে পৌমানি রে তো উনা উ খা খোখা নিবো তুমি রো তিনি জি নি এটো আখা আখা শিবু মে বাজাও দিলো আই আলে সুরাউ তুমি রো না লেখে বারে এ রাজাও তুমি রো চু যা বিরল না সাকে বারে นอติวาเลตาตาระกะติรพานอปะกะมะละพุทธะนอนิจะตาเรตาเรตะกะเลตะเฮลอติรพานิอะติเตตะมะทวยบาอุมอนอคาสุญาเนบะเซมุลาส
I Believe Bible. Welcome back. In the city of Siem Reap in Cambodia, a young tour guide takes tourists all around the city, but on a motorbike. Seha uses this unique adventure tours to share his journey and faith in Christ. Adventist Mission has more. In the city of Siem Reap, Cambodia, lives Seha, a tour guide. He takes tourists to ancient and historic spots around the city, not on vans or buses, but by motorbike. This unique adventure creates opportunities for Seha to share his journey of faith in Christ. So God called me since I graduated. He said, you have to start a tour business to reach out to the tourists. So I start my business with four bicycles and seven dollars. In business, it's, it's like a medium, it's like a bridge to gap. So I can reach out to the business people here in Cambodia and witness, and I can reach out to people who's traveling the world, even out of Christianity, to search for some things. But they come up to the real truth of what Christian all about, what Christian should be. Through his business, Seha has met people of different faiths and worldviews from all over the world. Business is just a way of reaching out to people in the area that you cannot invite them to church. These people know where you can go and invite them to church because in their mind, they hate Christianity. Seha's love for motorbikes and people is contagious. His way of giving tours is well known by other tour guide services that regularly hire him. But he has specific requirements before accepting those requests. So in my business, every of my clients, they know that I'm an Adventist. They know that I, I don't party, I don't drink, I live a different life. Most of the company that I'm involved, if they don't allow me to share God in my business through my work, I wouldn't take it. First is keeping the Sabbath. If they cannot let me have the Sabbath, I wouldn't do it, even though it's $100 per day. Second, if they try to stop me from sharing my testimony and my experience with God to people around me, I wouldn't take over the job. Seha runs his business with integrity and strong values. His first rule is honesty. Here, his integrity stands out from other tour companies whose main goal is to make more money by any means. One day, there was a man who booked Seha's tour service. This customer had used five other companies before. With those tour companies, the man had always paid $25 to rent a room in a certain guest house. But when he asked Seha how much he needed to pay, Seha said the price was only $13. The guest was so surprised. He said, that's impossible. I always pay $25 to stay here. Seha asked him to pay for the room himself at the front desk, and he found out that the price really was only $13. So when he went pay $13, he come to me, he said, why are you different? I say, what? You are honest. I've been here with different guy, different company, always $25. So I said, because I'm a believer in Christ. And then he said, I hate Christian, but I like you. So he asking about the Seventh-day Adventist Church and when he went home, he sent me a message on Facebook. He said, I'm reading my Bible now. Even in the last message he sent to me, he said, I just want to let you know, in this world, you are the only person who doesn't rip me off. Even my family member, they just want money from me. But you are the only person who doesn't rip me off, who I can trust in this world. So people who've been on my tour, most of them, they are atheists. They don't believe in God. Some of them went back. They sent me a message. And some of them said, oh, because of the experience I've been with you. Yo, I'm reading my Bible back. What a friends we have in Jesus. We sing the song. And Jesus is a true friend to us. And if you are a true friend to them, they open up everything for you. And when they open up everything for you, when they fully trust you, then they trust your God. We can share God's love through almost any job, hobby, or talent that God has entrusted to us. Seha is a wonderful example of this in Siem Reap, Cambodia. One thing I learned from him is honesty, and I want to be honest with all the people who come to my shop. 
Please pray for Seha and all the customers and tour companies he has shared Jesus with. May Seha continue to share the love of Jesus through his tour company. Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org. Then click on videos at the top. And finally, for today's episode, let's turn to Ashley Chisholm for a look at Adventist history. This week, we hear the Consecration Hymn by Frank William Howey. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. On May 23, 1899, a poem written by Frank William Howe appeared in the pages of the Review. At the time, Howe was finishing up his duties as editor of the Christian Educator and was about to embark on further study at Michigan Agricultural College, a forerunner of Michigan State University. Born in Michigan in 1865, Howe graduated from Battle Creek College in 1888 and 1890 was president of Healdsburg College, now Pacific Union College, from 1894 to 1897, and then edited The Christian Educator until 1899. After finishing his education at the Agricultural College and a brief stint as a governmental clerk, Howe was employed as first the director of the Division of Agriculture and then as dean of the College of Agriculture at Syracuse University in the U.S. state of New York educating students there until 1924. He died in 1932 at age 66. His poem from 1899 titled Consecration Hymn reads, O Lord, who hidest all our shame beneath thy crimson hand, we feel thy touch, we trust thy name, we yield to thy command. We had no courage in the strife, no shelter in retreat, but thou hast glorified our life, we lay it at thy feet. Be thou our king, our hearts are thine, do with us as thou wilt. So nevermore thy love divine be wounded for our guilt. We ask no ease, nor joyous hours to use for self alone. Take thou our thoughts, our ransom powers, and make them all thine own. That poem came from this week in Adventist history. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in-depth, and plenty other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Click the subscribe button to make sure you're caught up each week. And remember, leave a comment or a prayer request. We have people who are praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 11. The passage says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set the eternity into the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care. <laughs>